it's been a while since I've played Gen 8 OU, and so I haven't really thought about it too much. Uh, so hopefully this team currently works in the metagame, but I wanted to try out Choice Specs Blacephalon. Choice Specs Blacephalon is extremely powerful, and if your team doesn't have something for it, it can break through uh, your team really easily. So I want to go with that today. And in combination with it, I wanted to try out this Hydreigon set. Now, Hydreigon, of course, wants to generally be running Dark Pulse. It's a safe option. Nice neutral move on a lot of targets. And in the second move, you can see there is Superpower. Superpower is specifically for Tyranitar. Now, Blissophalon only has a few checks to it in the OU metagame, right? Of course, you can outplay a choice Blissophalon if you have a Heatran and maybe a uh, Shadow Ball Resist or something. But if you, uh, maybe like a Mana Buzz, for instance. But if you don't have uh, good checks to it or you're not able to outplay it, then it can easily just blow through your team pretty easily. Uh, but Titar is one of the few things that can deal with Blissephalon that are maybe being blissy, but then there's Trick, so you always have to watch out for that. And so, uh, in order to lure Tyranitar in, we've got a second Mon that also doesn't appreciate Spadef Tyranitar, right? If I'm facing a Spadef Titar, they're going to say, oh, Hydreigon, I'm going to come in on you. And I'll click Dark Pulse, and Dark Pulse won't do anything. And then Superpower will we'll just O-Clo them. That's what the Life Orb is there for, is to get out of extra damage power boost such that uh, superpower is always an Oko on Tyranitar. Then we got Roost to offset the life orb damage, and then finally Defog. And I'm not exactly sure if Roost is the best play, but it does give this team some form of longevity, which it could use for sure. And then Defog is sort of necessary because we don't really have that much hazards pressure, and so we want to be able to get off the hazards for things like Blacephalon, which really aren't going to appreciate it. And after that, we've just got some standard mods here. We've got a standard Tapu Coco here. Uh, you know, another rooster right here, which will be useful. This is Choice Scarf Cartana. Choice Scarf Cartana will never not be good, uh, hopefully. And then Slowbro is good because it allows us to get a slow teleport. And that'll allow us to get in our Blacephalon or Cartana or what have you. So that's pretty useful. And then lastly, we've got Landorus. Landorus has got Toxic for opposing Landorus and a few other mons that will give these team trouble. And there's our Rocker as well. I sort of want to put Knockoff on this because I don't have any Knockers on this team, uh, except for, I guess, Cartana. But if you sacrifice your turn, you don't get as many pivots. And of course, you can't not run out of Quake. And Landorus, of course, just suffers from Roll Compression Syndrome. But uh, that's the team. Let's find a battle. Okay. So on this very first game, we've got a Tyranitar, which is fantastic. So if I lead off with my Hydreigon, if they lead off with a Clefable, that's a problem. Mm. But I don't necessarily think... I mean, you might go into Clefable on Hydreigon, and if they do, that's a good play. But uh, if not... And this will be really good. Okay, so they do lead off with Clefable. Uh, but they don't get to scout out my set or anything. I think that's more or less okay. I'm going to go into my Slowbro here. I think it's the correct play. This guy have Thunder Wave, Knock Off. Uh, Moon Blast, of course, would be the safe play to click here, in my opinion. Now, I don't know if this is Magic Guard or Unaware. Seeing as how this is, looks like a Sido Sand team, that might be Magic Guard. They might be trying to avoid the chip from the sand. That would be my guess. And it's not like their team is really pressured by too many setup sweepers, I should think. Maybe Cosmic Power Body Press Mew or something. That'd be about it. And so I don't know if you really need Unaware Clef on this particular team. But if my opponent could click a move, that'd be great. I mean, you're a Clef, I'm Hydreigon. What do you think? Okay, yeah, so they're going to click knockoff. That's fine by me. I'm going to click feature site and to teleport. Okay. And then this is knockoff Moonblast, Stealth Rock. There's no way you don't. Like, there's no way you have Flamethrower. So I'm just going to click knockoff here. They should go into Buzzwall as they decide not to. They decide to go into Clef. That's fair enough. Uh, I guess they didn't need to go, in, they couldn't go into Buzzwell because the feature site, that's right. 
So I guess I could have capitalized that on that. That would have been a better play now that I think about it. Hmm. So that's a bit unfortunate. I'm going to go back into Slowbro here. And I'm going to click Slack off. The Moonblast did not too much, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, Slowking runs... This particular Slowking runs... Scald, Feature Sight, Slack Off, and Teleport. So I think I should be able to safely teleport on this as well. Okay. Then I'm going to go into Hydreigon so I can get a Defog off. As I go back into Clefable, that's fair. And I can go back into Slowbro on the Feature Sight. Now, as that does a lot of damage, but it does not put me in range of a second Moonblast. It does, I think, put me in range of a crit. But what are you going to do about that? All right, feature side again. Teleport. And then, um, I'm going to go into Papa Coco. And I'm going to U-turn here. As they probably are going to teleport out. Into a... Tyranitar. So if they go into Tyranitar here, then they might be wanting to stay in. So this is my one and only chance to get a superpower. Good. Now they're dead. So I'm glad I was able to lure that adequately. Now this is going to drop a Draco. Um, if this is Sandrush, then this still levitates off the ground, which is useful, but I think it's in range of an Iron Head. It is my only Defogger, though. So do I really want to risk it to a, uh, right? Cause, cause I can go to Top of Coco. Top of Coco is going to be immune and can scare it out with Dazzling Gleam and outspeeds non-choice Scarf ones. I don't know. Yeah, they might think I'm choice locked. So, or something. I, I mean, clearly I'm not choice locked cause I show life orb, but they might've made a play like that. I think that was a fairly safe assumption. So they are Sand Rush. So it's nice to have this. They can't click Earthquake here, so that if they click Iron Head, that's not great for them. And I get the burn. Wow, that's lucky. All right, I'm going to go into my Hydreigon at this point. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to go to Landris at this point. It's neutral. As the Swords Dance again, which is fair. I'm just going to click Earthquake. As Rock Slide does not get the flinch. Oh, that's good. That's good. And I actually win that game. All right, that was a bit surprising. I thought that they might have played a bit better and I might have gotten beaten down, but it's glad to glad to have that win under my belt. I don't know, let's get another one. Hmm. Okay, we're facing opposing ghost spam. That's a problem. Okay, I think if you are my opponent, you want to lead off with maybe Dragapult or Landers. So I'm going to lead off with my Top of Coco. If they lead off with Landris, that'll tell me if they're choice scarfed. Because we'll see whose ability activates first. If they're not choice scarfed, that's fine by me. I'm just going to U-turn here. As we get to scout their item. And they're not Rocky Helmet, so that's nice. Now they click Toxic. I'm going to click Stealth Rock here. Stealth Rock are pretty important to pressure the Vol Mandibuzz. I said Vol will be almost there. To, to get off a of Defog. Now, I've shown that I have my own Toxic, but that's fine by me. Um, now, this is sort of a problem, but I don't really have much that I can do about it. So I'm just going to have to click Earthquake here. As I actually lived that, wow. And now their Cephalon is gone. So at this point, hmm, I'm going to go into my Top of Coco again. Is it going to Dragapult? Yeah, I thought they might. I'm just going to click Dazzling Gleam. We're not going to predict. Okay. Now we're going to U-turn here. And they should predict me to go into my slow bro here. But I don't really have any play to punish that. So we're just going to go into it. And they do. But that's fine. Okay, going to click Scald here. And we get the burn. This is a bit of a risky play because if I hadn't gotten the burn, then that would have been a major problem. But I mean, I'll take it. I'm going to go into Hydreigon here. Hydreigon doesn't really do anything against my opponent's team. 
And if I can uh, get, let's see. No, we don't choke here. Yeah, we just stand. If I'd have gone into the top of Coco there, we would have had a bad day, right? Because if they had decided to Dragon Darts, well, then that's a good play on my part. And I get my top of Coco in and they're forced to Phantom Force and we can play that game. But I'd rather get the safe switch in uh, and, and go from there. I think that's the, the, the proper play. And really, they were in a commanding position at that point. Plus one Dragapult. If you click Dragon Darts on my Hydreigon, Hydreigon dies. Then you go to her Phantom Force on the top of Coco. And you're going to get off a lot of damage on the top of Coco. I don't know if it one-shots, but frankly, I don't even know if the if the drag the Dazzling Gleam one-shots me. No, they probably did. But still, um, I think that, that they should have just attacked me there. That would have been a safer play. But that is sort of the, the point of the ladder that we're at, where... People start making sort of crazy plays. Yeah, we'll take it. All right. Here's another team. This team is very pivot heavy, it looks like. Or at least they have three good pivoters, right? They got Vol Switch, Magnazone, and U Turn. Maybe Assault Vest, Tornadus, I might think, just because they don't really have any good Spadef Mons. I don't know if that's Scarf Top of Feeny or if that's Trapper Feeny. Hard, hard to know. And then Corviknight, of course, is there too. All right, so I can't lead off with Cartana. That would be folly. Leading off with Tabacoco, though, seems pretty safe. There's the dude lead off with Feeny. And I'm actually able to see that they are indeed Choice Scarfed. So I'm going to U-turn here. I mean, obviously a Choice Scarfed. I'm not going to let you capitalize on that. Okay. Um. You know what? Time for Blacephalon to come out. I haven't brought up Blacephalon a single dang time this entire video. So now I'm just going to click Flamethrower in front of me. And their Magnezone dies. Great. Okay. Mm. I'm going to Landris here. And I'm going to click the South Rock of my own. Okay, they are Tank Chomp. And now they may not want to stay in here. I feel like they'd go Corviknight, if anything. Yep, as they do. And I can go back into my Blacephalon and get another kill on something. I'm just going to click Flamethrower again. Don't really care. You can do whatever you want. That's fine by me. I don't think you Moonblast here. So I'm actually going to go into Hydreigon because it doesn't do too much this game. So I just want to scout and see what they'll do. As they do, decide to uh, trick, which is fine by me. And now I'm going to go into my Kartana, because the Misty Train is up, they can't Scald me. And if they Moonblast, I'll take a lot of damage, but if they don't, then that's fine. Um, hmm. At this point, I'm going to go Top of Coco. I don't want to lose my Kartana. It's too important as they knock off. Okay, I wouldn't have lost my Kartana, but I still would have lost the uh, I still would have lost the item on it, which would have been just about the same as losing Cartana totally. And my opponent decides to make a bit of a, a crazy brazen play. But that's fine by me. I mean, they can make plays like that all day. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I sort of need this still. I'm going to go back into Landorus. I don't, I'm not going to waste this on an Earthquake. It doesn't really do anything for me. And here they should always go into Corviknight, but what do you know? My opponent is... It's not going to make that play, uh, which is whatever to me. Don't really care about that. Um, now I saw his life orb. I feel like here you have to switch out. I'm going to actually click the defog. So go Weavile. Hmm, it's an interesting play. Uh, but you know, not a bad play. But if I'd gone for drag, uh, Draco Media there, wouldn't you have died, I feel? So, a little bit funny. Um, slow bro it is. Bye-bye, slow bro. Oh, I actually didn't even die. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Okay, I'm going to Scald here. As I get a crit, which is very unfortunate. I'm going to go into my Cartana here. And I'm just going to click the... Uh, let's see...
Hmm. Yeah, smart strike will do. So we're going to Tornadus. And now they're obviously going to go into Corviknight. Yep, as they do. I'm just going to click Thunderbolt here. Last time I clicked the Dazzling Gleam, predicting them to hard switch into Guard Chomp. Not going to do that same play twice. At this point, um, I still need the Top of Coco. Don't really need the Landers as much, I don't think. I'm going to click the Earthquake here. And then I'm going to click the U-turn, as I think they would switch out here, as they do. Do not think they switch into that, of all things. And I think they're now in range of the knockoff, just 34 minimum. Yep, so I can just go into this and click knockoff. That'll be great. As I think they might go into Corviknight, is what I'm thinking here, right? If they go into their guard chomp, then that'll deny them recovery. So go into top of Fini. I guess maybe predicting that, I have no clue. I'm gonna go into my Hydreigon, so I don't really need it. Okay, and now I can go into my Top of Coco, and I can click the Dazzling Gleam. As they go hard to Guard Chomp, which is a very silly play, but it's the play they chose to make. And so now something on their team is going to be in danger of dying. Yeah, and this is gonna be Guard Chomp, that's fine. Okay. Um. You know what I don't need? I don't need my Landorus anymore. But let's just see. Let's do some damage cocks real fast. Uh, we go back up to see how much damage I did last time. Where did it go last time? Uh, Dazzling Gleam did 33% to Torn last time. And we can see that that's in range of a standard heavy duty boot set. So I can just click Thunderbolt here. No reason not to. Maybe they, I don't know. You knocked off my heavy duty boots. You should know that what I am. All right, uh, we're just gonna click Thunderbolt again. I stride won't kill me, and that's the game. All right, so I took it a little bit conservatively there at the end. I think that obviously I had it in the bag at that point. I just didn't know for sure if that was a salt vest damage, although really 33% was a lot. So just wanted to sanity check. Yeah, my opponent definitely shouldn't have switched his guard chomp in on my top of Coco. I don't know what they were doing there. Uh, I think they needed the top of Coco, but or not the top of Coco, the Guard Chomp. Guard Chomp. Uh, but I also think that they shouldn't have necessarily thrown away their Magnus Zone so early in the game. It was a decent answer to at least, you know, Cartona locked into Leaf Blade or Smart Strike, so it limited my options in that regard. In combination with Tornadus, it made it a little more difficult to guess as to go to First Sacred Sword or whatever. Mm, I don't know. My opponent's team is sort of weird as well. I don't really know what you're doing with Tank Chomp plus Magnus Zone. Tank Chomp is a fine Pokemon, but normally I feel like Magnezone is good for trapping steel types that you want to get rid of for other Pokemon. And you have this Trick Feeny, which is sometimes useful to limit Ferrothorn, so you don't need Magnezone if you're doing that option for Feeny. Maybe if you're running Call Mind Feeny, I could see it. If you're running Guard Chomp with Scale Shot and you no know, Fire Move, which is sometimes a thing then definitely run Magnezone. And even if you were running Fire Fang, maybe still run Magnezone. But you're running defensive with Flamethrower, and I don't really see that as being something that needs Magnezone. Weavile would struggle with Buzzwool, but Magnezone is not helping you with that. Tornadus is helping you with that, that's fine. But I just don't really see the synergy of having the Magnezone there at all. So I would definitely change that if I were my opponent. Uh, that was a lot of points, though. Holy cow. All right. I'm actually going to end the video here. I think that we got to see the Blacephalon uh, put in a little bit of work. In the first game, we got to see the lure on Tyranitar, for sure, uh, with the Hydreigon. And I think the Hydreigon definitely had some difficulty getting Defogs off. And I think that would be one complaint I have with it. Uh, but unfortunately, Hydreigon doesn't get rocks. And so and so you can't put Defog on the Landorus, for instance. I could put Defog on the Topococo or something. 
but I really don't like that particular set. I think this set that's just the standard one that's been running for all of Gen 8 is the best set, uh, generally for Top Cover. And then I like Scar Cartona a lot on this team, and I would never put default on Scar Cart. Uh, but yeah, that that's the video for today. I'll see you guys next time.